Alright, so now that we've finished the basic importing of the limbs, it's time to move on to the facial and hand sprites. I'm using this default character as a demonstration, and as you can see, these sprites contain libraries full of different sprite elements, which will switch out to simulate animation. Technically every body part has a sprite library, but the ones used the most are for the hands, eyes, mouth, and even the eyebrows and nose. These are used for body and facial puppeteering and are important when creating your vector-based characters. So let's move on to my character. I'm going to start with the hands first, starting with the default hand. I'll use the replace button here and find my sprite. When prompted to replace all of the elements, select no. This hand will always be showing unless you define another one. Once I've imported that, you can see that it will move and rotate, but to make things faster, I'm going to move all my sprites together at the same time once they've all been imported. So for now, I'm not going to worry about the position and rotation of my sprite elements, and just import them in one by one. You can see that the blank spots in the sprite library contain default reference images for the recommended sprite image. It's a good idea to follow these, otherwise your puppeteering motions may look a little bit strange. So now I've skipped ahead a bit, and I have all of my hand sprite elements imported. Also notice the green selection box surrounding each sprite when the sprite editor is open. What I'm going to do is exit the sprite editor, and you'll see this selection box turn blue. The blue box means that I can perform sprite level editing, which will affect every single sprite element in the sprite library. Therefore, when I move the hand here to the correct position, then all of the other elements in the sprite library will do likewise. When I enter back into the sprite library, you'll see that the position of all of my hands has changed, but I still need to do some minor rotation and repositioning. Although the natural inclination may be to import and reposition each sprite element one at a time, this is much more time consuming and can cause confusion regarding sprite placement. I'll demonstrate on the character's left hand here. I'm going to replace the default hand sprite here first and reposition that at the element level with the green selection box still active. I'll import in another two sprites, but just leave those where they are for now. After I've finished importing the other two sprites, I'm going to exit the sprite editor and proceed to modify the position of my second sprite element using sprite level modification. Then I'll enter the sprite editor once again and use the element level modification to rotate it as rotation is not possible in sprite level modification. The problem this causes is now when you go back to the default hand, it will be slightly detached from the wrist, because the other sprite was moved down using sprite level modification, which affected all of the other elements in the sprite library. I can fix this simply by ensuring that I'm in the sprite editor and changing the position, but as you can imagine, this process takes a longer time and can be a little bit confusing. The process for replacing the eye sprites is much the same as I did with the hand sprites. I don't want to replace all of the sprites with my initial import, so I'll select No when prompted. And remember, I'm not moving each individual sprite as I import it, I'm going to move them all using sprite level modification later. It's a good idea when you create your sprites to name them according to the default name provided by Animator, just so they're easier to find. For the eye sprites, there are only 13 default element spots to fill. So once I've filled in all those, I can do the sprite level move to the correct place on my character's face. Now sometimes you'll want to add extra sprites beyond the default ones just to give your character a wider range of expressions. If I go into the sprite library once again, I can add these by changing to custom mapping in the drop down menu. This switches to a whole new library of custom sprites you can add. Since there are no sprites to replace here, I can just click Insert and then select my sprite. Importing the mouth sprites is exactly the same as the eyes and hands. Again, you can just use the default sprite template pictures to judge which one of your character's mouth sprites is suitable for which element spot. One great thing about element level editing is that you can create different expressions by essentially using the same sprites. Here I have three different element spots for raising the lip edges in different directions. First what I'll do is raise the right lip edge here by rotating that particular element and moving it slightly to the side. That modified sprite will then be assigned to that element spot in the sprite library. I'll just do the opposite for the raised left lip edge element. In addition to that, I can stretch the lip as well by using the transform boxes, which is what I'm doing here. 
can see now that as I go through the library, those changes remain. Now I'm going to move from the default mapping library to the lips mapping library, which contains all the sprites your character will use for the lip sync feature in Animator. As you can see, there are different facial shape templates that you need to fill with different mouth sprites in order to make your character's mouth move when you do lip syncing. At the end of part 3 of this tutorial, I'll show you how the results look on the finished character. In the next section, you'll learn all about rigging your character's joints as well as setting the layer hierarchy for its body parts.